Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna show you a pretty fast and easy way to besiege a castle or a town to have a sufficient quality of army to do so. Alright, so for this first, well, so far my only real tutorial on this game is I have Regeer Knights, Swadian Knights, um, and a bunch of archers, as well as men at arms, and well, these will be upgraded shortly. But um, I also have my NPC followers Borka, Boondock, Marnid, Lizalit, I think. I just call them Z. Uh, result, but and then I have Artemir, Ar Artemir, uh, Baha I don't know how to say his name. Those two us gonna butcher. Rolf and Nizir, all ready and equipped for combat. Um, as I see, I have leadership at ten. Charisma's twenty-seven. Um, the highest I've seen for an army size would be um, 155, uh, 154 men I gained one leadership off of reading a book so if you don't count that then it will be like 150-ish I think or something like that um, here's my skills and then my armor is pretty nice. Head, body, leg. Horse won't really be needed. I'm going to use a one-handed balanced military cleaver with a reinforced knightly heater shield, a kudrit bow, and a large bag of barbed arrows. And then I have sufficient food for the siege as well. Um, this is my kingdom. Um, I have used no cheats whatsoever of any kind. I'm on my 1,500 and something days in the game, and I've spent over 300 hours real time. So, um, the first to fall to my might was the Serenade Sultanate, then it was the Vigiers, then it was the... Khajiit, then there was Swadia, then I just barely finished off the Rodox. They haven't been so called defeated yet because they're still lords and stuff. But as soon as enough lords renounce their allegiance, then they will be defeated. And I'm currently at war with the Nords, and my martial art I have selected. Rafad is leading the siege on Ra Ra I can't talk Ravadin uh, town which has 491 men and 35 prisoners and from the looks of things it uh, looks like they have heavy on footmen quite a few archers but mostly it's heavy fortified footmen. So, um, in all, I am playing on the mod of the diplomacy. Uh, so, um, yeah. Alright, so let's get this. Where is it? Uh, it is. Accompany him until he decides to launch a siege. Which should be within the next minute or so. So this is gonna. This is my first uh, Mountain Blade Warband video. So let me know what you guys think. The Nords and um, 
The Nords and the Rodok are very worthy opponents in my opinion because they even though they don't have any horsemen they have spearmen and uh, heavy fortified foot, foot soldiers which can do severe amounts of damage if they have a vast quantity of elites so and by elite troops I mean like um, my elite troops would be the knights the marksmen the sharpshooters those are my elite troops that's what I mean by elite and then the not so elite are like the footmen or um, man and arms are pretty elite but not as elite as a knight <laughs> alright let's wait for him to get there just to okay uh, proceeding push the siege camp join the next assault Okay, for this, you wanna. I have archers hold the position back here so I can give um, the heavy f elite soldiers like uh, the infantry and the cavalry and my knights and stuff can go on with. Since they're more experienced in close hand combat, put them up. And since archers are more experienced at far range, put them back. And so they do more damage. Uh, when I first started off, I didn't know you could like control your troops and stuff. And then I just hit a wrong button or just a random button at one time and said, "Oh, what does this do?" And figured out you could like um, organize your troops and stuff, which made my life a whole lot easier. Because before I had <coughs> a bunch of archers up on the ladder where they couldn't do anything really but melee, and that's what they suck at. So, uh, let's take a few shots. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, headshot. 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 Come on, come on. Oh, headshot. Ah. Uh. Not really headshots, but they get the job done. Okay, so I see there's some house... Oh, shit. <laughs> A guy moved right in front of the... Where I was shooting. Damn it. Alright, so I should probably go up there and help him out with my sword. Since the archers are doing most of the archery, I figured I should probably come up here and help him. Uh, okay, where's... Not video. Damn it. I um, think I was trying to figure out how to turn on the sound before I end siege, but I guess I have to do that after. Okay, so. I guess I have to talk really loud then to compensate for the, all these, like, battle noises and stuff. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. <laughs> I'll try my best to speak really loud, and yeah. Alright, so this area of stuff is cleared out from the archers, of their enemy archers. So, my basic strategy I like to use a lot is. Ooh, get archer down there. That's where they spawn, obviously, so don't really want to barge in there or get too close since they have all the archers. Alright, since my guys are uh, kicking ass, I'll have the archers I have out there move up to here so they can come up the ladder to have a better view and still be protected by my forces that are Most of the protector. Oh god, we're saying good. Not good. <laughs> Not good. <coughs> hmm. but yeah, my strategy I like to use is I have archers and a bunch of elite units. And then for me, I like to go up, not frontal assault, but let some of the 
people up front, take care of them, and when they get up on the uh, past the ladder or siege tower or whatever the current thing is, I come up, kill some, sneak behind them, then they're too busy engaging my frontal forces that they um, are distracted and I can come up and kill them in their ha and up from behind. But, in this case, I'm the distraction where my forces gather up behind me. Since my archers, I guess, are coming up. Since I thought my men would, like, last a little while until my reinforcements come. It shouldn't be too long. Yeah, there's forces down there. Yeah, that's another good thing. They're too busy with the blocking the archers with their shields that if they turn around, they'll get killed. Or if they um, too busy blocking the archers arrows with their shields, my man can up behind them and easy kill. So it's a win-win situation. But nords are especially uh, tricky to deal with since they're all mainly foot melee soldiers and they have axes which complicates things. It would be interesting to see uh, the siege, the attackers and the defenders of a castle or town both be nordic troops and see who would win. That would be very interesting. Alright, so we got a shitload of archers down there. And my... well, not, I guess they're not my archers per se, but my allies' archers and stuff are doing their fair share of killing. Boom! Alright, headshot. Oh, Headshot. Headshot. Booyah. Bring on the headshots. Oh, I'm just going at it right now. Hmm. Hell yeah. Uh, obviously I've... gotten my archery skill up quite a bit. Because being king and all, you gotta have good skills, <laughs> especially combat, as well as um, uh, leadership and stuff. Trade helps too, with money wise and stuff. So I haven't really advanced much in that, only because I've been trying to get my combat skills up so I can survive a fight like this especially when I'm not using a shield and I'm heavy archery and stuff but as you can see my allies come and my men are the wolf my banner is the uh, horse archer in black and the round circle obviously my Vigir Knights, my, but my Vigir Knights kick ass, as well as the Swadian Knights, and come back here and help my ar the archers out a bit, so they don't get trampled with flanking troops, which is never a good thing, but that can go two way. Okay, okay, come on, yeah, baby, go Vigirs, hmm. Um, so far, this is as far as I've gotten in this kingdom so far, which is pretty good concerning how long it took. I have, I think, it's like 34 or something vassals, uh, so it's pretty nice. The hard part about having many vassals though is keeping them all happy. And in this diplomacy, you can set, uh, What's it called? Uh, domestic 
things, I guess. Can't remember the exact name for it, but you can set like policies and stuff, which you can increase noble power or you can increase your troops' quality, but decrease the quantity. So you can have really badass troops, but not as many of them. Or you can have very uh, a lot of troops, but not as good. So I figured, since I have 34 vassals, best troops are better than quantity. Because, uh, I mean, think about it. Uh, shitload, I have 34 vassals. Each one of them has 50 to 100 men or more. And they all have great quality troops. That's going to be more effective than a lot of troops that aren't good quality or great quality or whatever. So it works well in my favor. Especially since I'm not the only one who can do these domestic policies. My enemies can have good or great troops as well. Which means they'll have more... Ah, chewing so loud. Okay, so the enemy will have a uh, quality of troops too, so they could have just equal amount and it can do severe numbers. But it's kind of interesting to see who would win with the uh, quantity versus uh, quality kind of war. <laughs> wow, this guy sucks. Oh, headshot for the win. I think he was like trying to target some guy behind this little door or something. I don't know. Yeah, that he really sucks at aiming. In my opinion, the I haven't really tried out many mods since I only have time for like one or two. But the mods themselves, are, since this is like gives you a whole new view on things, it doesn't really change the map or anything. It just gives you more things that you can do, like set policies and stuff, or set the number or quality of your troops, or the trade merchandising or stuff like that. Also, you get, um, what are they called? I don't know. Let's talk, go back to the siege then. Oh yeah. What, what, what now? See, quality is better than quantity. <laughs> Since I just kicked all their asses. And 78 men got garrisoned. Yeah. Alright, so that is a basic way to take a castle. You don't necessarily have to have a shitload of troops, but it never hurts. Um, as for the way to take it, um, my advice is to have archers and quite a few elite troops. The more elite troops and more archers you have that are more skilled though, will cost a pretty penny. But since I've got my towns and castles and villages, I have um, enough income to support that. But obviously, things can change real fast, but this is a tax and efficiency, which takes away 30 grand and but this will change by the time the week ends, because it always does. I always get green most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's a basic tutorial, and, or in my personal opinion, an easy way to take down a garrisoned castle of town. So rate, like, subscribe, and comment. I'll talk to you guys next time.